Yes, we are back with our Traxxas Rustler 4x4 VXL project. And this truck right here is loaded up with Traxxas option parts. If you haven't seen our series, make sure you check out the playlist. But today, we're going to install some more driveline parts. So let's sit down at the bench and check them out. Okay, so I have four parts that we're going to talk about today, and the first part is the aluminum motor plate. Now, we've got a lot of aluminum parts on this truck. We've got the aluminum steering knuckles and aluminum caster blocks, aluminum rear hubs, aluminum shock towers. We've even got the aluminum links on here, and it's only fitting that we go ahead and install the aluminum motor plate. What I really like about an aluminum motor mount, uh, one, it's very, very sturdy. Obviously, the, what we have on there now is a composite plastic. And although it's really well built, I really like how sturdy an aluminum motor plate is. Uh, and what it also does, it helps dissipate a little bit of heat. So obviously, that motor plate that's mounted to the motor is going to fit onto here as well. And that's going to transfer a little bit of heat. And it also provides a sturdy mount for that center differential bearing as well. So this is a great option to have, in my opinion. What we also have here are the spiral cut gears for the uh, differentials. Uh, this is actually a set, so they give you the bevel pinion and then the ring gear. What's on there is a straight cut, and with a spiral cut, you just get a bit more strength. And since it's a machine gear as well, you get the strength of a better metal. Uh, so, you know, if you're going and adding power to your vehicle, maybe a different brushless system in there, or you're, you're putting more voltage through it, having a stronger gear for the differentials is always a great idea. And then finally, what I have here, and I had to open it because I had to check this out, is the center differential. This is a pretty cool item to have. If you're going to go and hit the track, I think, you know, if you're just bashing and stuff, maybe the stock slipper on there is, uh, the best route to go but if you think you're going to hit up the track for some laps or you really want to get the most performance out of your vehicle you might want to check out this center diff option now this is comes pre-built from the factory it's got a cast metal diff cup on there it's got a steel gear and, and it's already filled you don't even have to put oil in it it's a sealed differential and they have a really heavyweight oil in there so this again if you want to get some performance tuning out of your rustler 4x4 this is something you're going to want to check out all right first up what we're going to do here is we're going to swap out the motor plate and since i have to take the rear off anyway to access the differential i'm going to start by removing the rear i'm going to take the four screws out two on top two on the bottom slide this off and then i'm going to go pull the motor plate out so i can show you so after removing the four screws that hold the rear clip to the chassis, I just pulled it free and then removed the slipper clutch while I was there. Uh, and then I started to work on the motor plate. It's just a single screw that holds on the gear cover and then four more screws that hold the plate to the chassis. You're also going to have to remove the 2.5 millimeter screw that secures the motor plate to the motor mount. So uh, that's pretty easy to do. I'm using Traxxas tools. Uh, I do have a, a ball driver from that tool set which made that getting that screw out pretty easy. Uh, and then just their 2.5 and then their 2.0 millimeter straight bit to get the rest of the screws out. But uh, once I had it out, uh, you know, swapping this thing out is going to be pretty easy. Uh, the only tips I have here are make sure you go and clean everything before you go and install your new parts, clean off your bearing, take a, a brush and wipe out any dirt on the inside of the chassis. Uh, and then it's really just dropping this back in. So I'm gonna go slide this right in. I mean, it just drops right in, put all the factory hardware back in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in the center differential. Now, the only thing you really need to do here is take the bearing from the motor mount and slide it on. You could, of course, press it into the motor mount. Uh, that works as well. But this thing is ready to go, basically. It's got a very, very heavy differential oil in there. I read the instruction sheet. It's got a million weight oil in there. Uh, so it's got a very stiff feel to it. But basically what a center differential does is it allows you to tune where the power goes on the vehicle. So let's say, for example, you have a lot of rear traction and you have a, a lighter weight oil in the center, uh, it will transfer more power to the front. Now with a heavier weight oil, it's gonna kind of act like a four by four. It's kind of gonna give it a more distributed fee, uh, power feel to the front and rear, but it allows you to go ahead and tune that with different weights. So if you wanted more power to go to the wheels that are slipping, you could go and put a lighter weight oil in here, maybe a 500,000 weight oil. And like I said earlier, it's really so you go and tune the performance of the vehicle. Maybe you're on a, a track surface, you wanna go and tune performance for that. This will allow you to do that. It acts much similar to your front and rear differentials. It distributes power. All right, so with that said, once you got that bearing on there, you really just have to slide it right into place. And uh, I'm going to move on to getting this all buttoned up and show you how it looks. 
the motor mounts bolted back in and I have my motor in place. I've got the center differential in place. The only thing I haven't done yet is set the gear mesh. I don't want to do that until the rear of the vehicle is back on and this center diff is mounted securely and then I'll be able to set the gear lash properly. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the rear clip. I got to disassemble this so I can access that differential. Now to do that, I want to go ahead and remove the rear bumper section. So that's just the two screws there. Once I do that, I'm going to remove the two screws up top here that secure the top of the gear case. And then I'm going to go remove this rear pivot uh, support right here. And it's just three screws, one in the back and two on the bottom. Then I'll be able to slide the cap off and access the differential. I'm also going to need to remove the two screw pins that secure the drive shafts to the differential. I've got the rear differential out of the rear clip. And first up, I'm going to go and just pop out the bevel pinion. Um, it's just pressed into this gear in the back actually it just kind of falls right out and uh, now it's ready to slide in our new spiral cut gear Slip that in there and when you do take everything apart Make sure you go ahead and clean any dirt out so you don't get any dirt into the new gears You don't want to ruin those prematurely All right now that I have that in there I can turn my attention to the differential It's just four screws that hold the ring gear onto the differential cup so I'll go and unscrew those once I do that, I'll pop this gear off and you simply have to slide out the Apple gear shaft and then swap out the O-ring, place it into the new gear and then put everything back together. Now would probably also be a good time to go ahead and clear out any dip oil if it's been really well used and just replace it with new oil. If it does look good, you don't need to replace it. You may have to top it off just a little bit because you're going to lose some when you take it apart. So I have some Traxxas 30,000 weight oil Then I'm going to go and put in if, if I do lose any oil during the swap. So I'm going to go swap this out now and get this back together. Okay, I've got my differential back together and uh, that went pretty smoothly. Uh, the new spiral cut gear on there looks pretty awesome, obviously. Uh, but I do have a couple of tips for you. If you do go ahead and clear out the oil in there, clean everything up on the inside, when you go and reassemble everything, put a little bit of black grease on the O-ring uh, before you slide the output shaft. It gives that O-ring a little bit of lubrication. Uh, you could use oil as well. The other thing I wanted to mention is make sure you transfer over the gasket that seals the ring gear to the case. You don't want to put that back together and have oil seep out. And then uh, obviously go ahead and clean everything. I still have a little bit more cleaning to do, but it's pretty much ready to go back in. Uh, so I'm going to go throw it back together pretty much in reverse order in which I took it apart. Got to add a little bit black grease to the gears as well to lubricate it not a whole lot but once I get this back together we'll move on to the front differential which is pretty much the same process okay so I've got the rear of the vehicle back together and the one thing I forgot to mention was make sure you put the differential back in correctly make sure that the ring gear faces the same side as which you took it apart because if you go and flip it over it will reverse the direction in which the wheels spin so after the differential was all buttoned back up I did go ahead put the rear clip back on and I'd set my gear mesh put the cap back on that and then I went and jumped ahead here and took the front end apart as I mentioned earlier it's pretty much the same process as taking the rear apart just a couple screws are different there's three screws that hold on the bottom of the bumper and a screw that holds on the front brace plate but everything else comes apart the same way and uh, you could go ahead and swap out the ring gear the same way the only difference is this is the bevel painting gear now this one has a shaft on it where in the rear uh, it didn't have that so what you have to do is you have to go in from the side with a 1.5 millimeter hex driver and remove the screw pin that secures the bevel pinion shaft to the output spline uh, for the center drive shaft uh, so once you go and unscrew that, you could go ahead, take a long nose pair of pliers, just reach in here and pull the gear out. Once the old gear is out, slide the new bevel pinion in and replace that screw pin that holds the spline on. And then just move on to swapping out your ring gear. Again, make sure you go ahead and clean it if necessary, add some oil if necessary, and throw it back together. And the truck is back together. The only downside to the parts I put in today is you don't really get to see them once they're installed but they're going to help this truck out a lot. Again, if you're putting more power into it or if you're looking to, for more performance. Those gears are nice strong gears. They should hold up to the power. They spin nice and smooth. That motor plate is a nice addition, as I mentioned earlier, because it dissipates heat, because it's a nice sturdy mount. And then the differential, it's just going to offer some different performance traits that it didn't have before. And if you're the type of guy that likes to tinker or run on a track, then that center differential might be a fun option for you 
you to install. All right, the only thing that's left is for me to go and dry this thing. And right now it's raining and snowing outside and it's forecasted to do that for another two weeks or so. So I am going to put that part of this video off. I was hoping to tack it onto this one, but it'll be a separate bashing video. Should be a lot of fun. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss that video. We'll see you back soon for some more RC driver fun.